Welcome to Rotary. Thanks for coming today. Uh, good day, good lunch. Thanks again, uh, Shane Marshall and Chad Argyle for coming. I think this is the last uh, probably video uh, time you get to be in front of the residents of Spanish Fork. Grateful for Pete following them around and, uh, and getting this footage for everybody that can't be in person. Again, no Shane for a long time, no Chad for a long time. Uh, great uh, people, uh, great candidates for, for council. Um, and uh, I guess my pitch that way is uh, anybody that's willing to get in t into the arena uh, deserves to, you know, to be heard and, and deserves uh, some respect. So I uh, respect both of these men. I'm excited to hear from them today. Well, we're happy to have our uh, candidates for city council here. I was listening to Greg Scordis on uh, KSL yesterday, and he was talking about how he's, he's been in, I think, three races and lost three races. But he said the opportunity to run and to talk with people and to think about the community and do what needs to be done, he, w he wouldn't trade uh, even if he did lose the races because of the uh, good experiences he had doing that. So we appreciate you doing this. What we're going to do is have you come up here and we'll give you each uh, a few minutes to introduce yourself, talk a little bit about what's important to you, and then we're going to ask questions. So we have Shane Marshall here and Chad Argyle. Thank you all for having us today. I appreciate it. Um, like Dr. Francis said, my name is Shane Marshall. I am a very long-term res resident of Spanish Fork City. I moved here in 1977. Lived here basically my entire life. Grew up here. Graduated from Spanish Fork High School. Um, went on to, at the time, UVCC, Utah Valley Community College. Um, Chad's going to say UTC. So we both went there in different time periods. Um, after Utah Valley, I went to BYU where I graduated in civil engineering. Um, from there, I went to uh, work for the Utah Department of Transportation. Worked there 25 years as a civil engineer. The last five of those years, I was the executive d deputy director for the department. So I got a chance to interact with the legislature the last five years and help steer the department, run the department, and uh, gained a lot of knowledge about how the department works across the, the, the state and how local governments across the state act and interact with their state partners. Um, learned a lot about land use and how it affects transportation and how it affects quality of life within, within each of those communities. Um, I married a, a local girl that we met in high school and we've been married ever since and um, she grew up just right across the street from the barbers. And, um, her name is Carrie Bowles, she's Kay, um, Kay Bowles' daughter. Um, so we've been married since, well, forever. I mean, it's been a long time, since high school. Whew, it's a long time. Um, so that's my background, that's where I came from. Um, I decided to run for city council after I retired because I am a glutton for city for, for service. Um, I spent 25 years in public service where I learned, had a kind of a love-hate relationship with it. It's, it's something I love to do. There are definitely times when it's not fun, right? You get to stand up in front of folks like this that sometimes are not happy. Um, but helping, him work, help, helping them work through their frustrations has been a, a lot of fun. And I have to tell you that after a year of retirement, I missed it. Um, so I wanted to be, get back and, and serve again. I actually do work. I am a civil engineer for a, a private uh, consultant firm here over in Pleasant Grove. But, so I have a full-time job in, in running for city council. Uh, I was on the city planning commission for seven, for four years back in 2007 and really got a good taste of what happens at the city government level and, and think I can be valuable. Um, in 25 years of public service, I learned how to lead people. I learned how to collaboratively make decisions with a group of people and I think that really is going to be beneficial as a city council member. Um, I was very interested to hear your four-way four test. Um, I love the fact that it talks about all concerned because um, that's really what I want to bring to the city council is make sure that I have an understanding of the, the total voice of the citizens. Um, my approach is very collaborative. I want to hear from you. I definitely do not have the corner market on all the good ideas. And I think that city government can be better if, if the city council is listening to the citizens and incorporating to the extent that they can their input and their ideas. Um, there'll be times when you and I will disagree and hopefully I can articulate well enough my point of views and I can listen to you from your point of views. Um, and we can work through our issues and come to an understanding of why we believe what we believe. But I'm extremely open to having those conversations and I welcome them. Um, <clears throat> the city's not gonna get a bit any better if we don't work together to, to improve it. And I, you know, 
when someone said, why now? Why run now? What's, what are the issues that keep you up at night? I have to admit that the city government is doing a really good job. The city council has done a great job. Um, what I think I bring in this time is I think their Spanish Fork has come to a, an inflection point where planning for growth has been relatively straightforward and simple. We had a big area to grow into, and we've grown into that. And now growing, going forward, that growth is going to be much more difficult. And we're really going to have to think about it strategically, about where we grow, how we grow, what goes in those locations, so that it doesn't have a detrimental impact to the folks that are here today. I want to make sure that Spanish Fork City is a place where my kids not only want to come to live, but can live here. <clears throat> it would be no good if they can live here if they just have no desire whatsoever to come back. Right? So it's about quality of life, and it's about allowing the next generation to live in Spanish Fork. So that's what, I, that's what my goal is on the city council, is to think strategically about where development happens, why it happens, the quality of that development, and making sure that my kids can live here in the future. Um, I think that's probably me. I'll wait for questions and turn the time to chat. Thanks, Shane. Um, Chad Argyle, uh, I am a longtime resident of Spanish Fork, graduated from Spanish Fork High School. Um, married my high school sweetheart, Teresa Evans. Um, we have four children and 13 grandchildren. Uh, my parents are Joyce and Bud Swanner. Uh, her parents are Blaine and Linda Evans. Both have had uh, businesses in the community. Um, I have served the last four, four years on the council and I'm seeking a re-election. Uh, currently, uh, Shane mentioned that, so he went to UVU and I went to Utah Tech. And I, you know, I've introduced that because that's where I went and then it's now a college. And I keep thinking, so it was over on university, on the east side of university. And I remember going there, working for my father-in-law as a truck driver and they had truck driving school back then. And they had an old truck set up in the back and you got in and drove the truck and somebody sat behind you and and simulated loads and stuff like that so you could learn how to shift and go through the things. I always wished I would have taken that because when they moved, they just got rid of it and trashed it because it was a pretty cool thing that they had set up, but that was tech. Now we're to technology. Um, I worked for Quest Communications for 34 years, retired about eight years ago, um, and have since just kept to keep busy, new farm and other things around the community to, uh, to keep myself busy. Mostly a list. I was just telling these guys I had a long list today. I'm off today, so there was a list of stuff to get done. <laughs> and I've been working on that, which means cleaning and other things, but that's okay. Keeps me busy. Um, I have absolutely enjoyed serving this community. Um, I currently serve on two water boards, which that's one of the reasons that I want to continue to serve. Um, the Nebo Water Agency is between some communities in this town and involved in uh, coming up with a groundwater management plan. Um, as we know, water is precious. Uh, Spanish Fork, previous uh, uh, council and mayor and departments have done very well for Spanish Fork. Spanish Fork is in a very good place with our water, but we need to continue to to protect it, watch out for it, and make sure that in the future that it is precious resource for the city. I also serve on the senior board, which I've absolutely loved doing. Um, being a part of that, helping them to improve the senior citizen center down there. Um, and then uh, I also serve right now on a committee, which is uh, wastewater. So our new, our power, our, our sewer plant, is 50 years old. It was upgraded in 1983 when we added Mapleton into the sewer plant, and it's it's time for some upgrades. It's been uh, patched together long too too long. We need to improve it. So um, those things I want I want to continue to do. The last time I was here, I was invited here by Mike uh, to talk to you about something that's was going to take place, and at that time it was an all abilities park. That's been a little while. And that's one of my big things is now uh, a family in the community has donated some uh, some money to towards the park and gave us some goals. And one of those goals is to have this thing done by 2020 
fiesta days. So we're in high gear now. Um, and our biggest problem was land. And hopefully by the end of this week, we have that land locked down and we can start going forward with it. So I am very excited about that. As I've been the last couple of weeks, I've been talking with those people who have special needs because we're going to have an opportunity to visit with them and get some ideas from them for this park. It's not going to be a small park. It's somewhere in the area of eight acres. And when you talk to them, they are so excited about it because it will be a blessing in their lives and in, in our community in Spanish Fork. Um, I have, uh, and I don't even, can't even remember his name. Tell me your name. Glenn. Glenn. Yeah, sorry, Glenn. He just mentioned something about somebody he knew that had run for three times in a council, and he hadn't won anything, but he, he had absolutely enjoyed running for a, a political position. Most people, when they say, why do you do that, and it's, all you do is get to be their, their place for you to come and complain and yell and scream at you. And I have, I have not had that. I have had such a positive experience. I do get emails and I do get phone calls of people that are upset, but usually what I've done is gone to their home or met them and talked with them face to face and listened to their concerns and trying to work something out. Can't always please all of them, absolutely that, but just, just to listen to, to them. I have absolutely enjoyed running for, this would be my fourth time in running for an office. And the, the running part of it is a, a, the best thing because you get to talk to people. And we've, we've had meet candidates and get to answer their questions and things like that. And that's been very enjoyable for me. I love Spanish Fork. I've lived here. I have grew up here. Um, I was laughing because I work with a guy now that I went to school with and we were kind of laughing because we both had paper routes. And I, I'm kind of jealous because he had paper route on that end of town and I'm going to say something. so. Jack's tire and oil that, oil that was down at that end of town, you won't, it's a gas station down there. Well, he had that end of town, and one of the waiters down there really liked him, so he got pancakes all the time. And I, when he told me that, I thought, what? All I do is got froze and, and rained on. Well, if it was that, she'd bring him in fixing pancakes. But that was, when I was young, I had four paper routes in this community. This community was small, it was probably about 4,000. Um, when I said that to a couple of my grandkids, they kind of looked at grandma and, what's a paper route? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, um, everybody used to get a paper and we used to deliver those. So um, I've watched this community grow. Um, I've watched businesses changed. I've watched buildings changed. I've watched Canyon Creek change. And it all has been for our quality of life. It's been a betterment. We do have issues. I, my biggest worry is the traffic. Uh, as we continue to grow the traffic, and, and we do have plans, but some of those plans are kind of out, and we have been working to pull some of them plans in that have to do with transit and other routes and uh, helping us do that. And I hope that uh, as I serve, and if I have the opportunity to serve, that I get to continue to do that because traffic, I look at Salt Lake City, and I worked up there, and I hated working there, and what was really frustrating is I had about 55 trucks and I had a permit for every one of those trucks to park around in Salt Lake City. But the way it worked is if we parked in illegal stuff, we got a ticket and then I had to go down to the court and take the ticket and show up at the court and say, hey, I, you know, I have a pass and then they'd take, get rid of the ticket. I could never figure out what good the pass did me because it took a lot of my time to go down there because there's nowhere to park in Salt Lake. And yes, they make a lot of money on that, and I don't want to get to that point. I want to be able to park in my community and enjoy the fact that I can drive around and go to stores and other things and have parking. So that's an important part. And the traffic is, Main Street is busy. Our downtown Main Street is awesome. We've got a lot of neat businesses on Main Street. I um, encourage you to go to them and use them if you can and, and will. Um, and, and it's exciting to see some of them new businesses come in as we have uh, ribbon cuttings and the, the Chamber of Commerce has those ribbon cuttings and we get to see some of these new businesses as they come in. I've been grateful to live in this community and I would like to continue to serve this community. Thank you. So we're going to start with one we asked uh, last week. 
to our other two uh, people running. Did they do real well? They did well. <laughs> you all do well, so. Um, and that is, with the growth in Canyon Creek, um, particularly with all the new stores coming in and the sales uh, rev tax revenue that comes in, uh, why do you feel it's still um, appropriate to um, take money to subsidize the general fund from water and electricity? <laughs> so are you meaning the, the, so the enterprise, the, I'm assuming you're talking about the 3% that we have each one of those yes. give, give back to us. Um, so I'm not sure the, how to answer that completely. Um, those, each one of those funds, uh, so each one of our, the electric department, the water, the sewer, storm, streets, uh, SFCN, the public, each one of them have a 3.5% uh, thing that they have to give back to the general fund and the enterprise. And the money that, we, that we've used that in the past has gone, has not really, it comes back to the general fund and it's not really gone to projects that, uh, I mean, just gone into the fund. We've usually used it for projects that need to be done, that we need to complete maintenance things and some other things that didn't get put in the budget. Um, as our tax, as the sales tax increase, and Canyon Creek is under an RD right now, and so when we start seeing more and more of that taxes, our sales tax has increased um, several million dollars over the year. Um, and the, I am, I'm sorry, but I am not the best to answer that. I, when we sit down and he puts, uh, our manager puts that before us and say, I have this $1.5 million, what would you like to do with it? And, and you know, we each list and then take some time to do them. They are good projects, but to continue to doing that, I, I, I don't know, I know that that is something that even the state legislative has had some issues about is this having and uh, taking money from them enterprises enterprise fund back into the general fund but right now it's something that we utilize very very much and used to fix things in the cities that normally don't get in the budget or the end of the year kind of things so I think it's important right now but as that continues to grow maybe that doesn't come so important but I still think it's important right now that we continue to have them address that back because they are a fund in their self and the utilities do fund them. And hopefully we're not raising funds so that that then increase, I mean, well they have to give that 3% then we have to increase it so that they continue so they have that. That's kind of a, I don't wanna go there, I wouldn't wanna see that if we just continue to raise so that we can fund back the general fund, especially when we're getting that much sales tax back each year. Well, I'm new to the whole thing, so I don't have a ton of experience, but I, um, I, I think as the sales tax increase, um, what we need to look at is our, our general population is also increasing significantly. And when you have, when you go from 4,000 people to 44,000 people, you need to provide additional resources and those resources cost money and that's where sales tax tips comes in. Um, as far as moving the enterprise funds back, well, funds from a very specific use to the general fund, I think that's something that we as a community need to talk about very transparently. It may be that we're using that money for a really good cause, an all-access park or a library or whatever that might be, and that might be a very good use of that money, but we better have a very open and transparent conversation about that. Um, it could easily be that those, all of those funds get lowered by 3%, and then maybe our quality of life goes down. Maybe that 3% is being used to provide a much better quality of life so my kids can come here and want to live here. But the, my, I think my biggest concern with it is that the conversation doesn't seem to happen in a very transparent way. I know that it happens, and it happens in a very intelligent way when the council gets together. I just can't see it. And I don't know if the rest of the community can see it. So I think that if we're going to spend money, we better have a very open, in, a very transparent conversation right in front of the public about how we're going to spend that money, where it comes from, and where it's going.
Um, if you could um, do whatever you wanted the first week you, you're elected at your first council meeting, they said you, you may have your wish of your heart. What is the number one thing you would do for Spanish Fork? Wow. Who asked these questions? Those are great. Man, what would you do? Um, let's see. I would want to create a, a city council meeting. It's kind of going back to this whole transparency collaborative effort thing that, that I really hold dear. Um, I want to create a, a place where people can come and give their input and have a conversation about the direction of the city. Um, <clears throat> when I was on the Planning Commission, so many times we would be in, a, in the room by ourselves making a decision or recommending a decision to the council that's going to affect generations of Spanish Fork citizens. And no one was there. No one showed up. But when, when it affected them personally, they might show up. But when it affects their kids, their grandkids, no one was there. So what I would hope, what I would love to see, and if I could do this, it would be my wish, would be to have a good conversation about the direction of Spanish Fork with a broader audience. A very collaborative discussion about where the city is going and why we're going there. That'd be a cool wish. Well, Mike, will you work on that one? <laughs> um, when you talk about the fact, so right now, I, I, my family is very blessed. My children have remained in Spanish Fork. What I would probably, the first thing what I would like to see is some businesses move into this community that are businesses that would allow my kids, my, my kids and my grandkids the ability to make a living and stay around here. Um, I, I know Utah is growing and there's a lot of things going on in Utah and, that, and that's great. But for them to not have to travel to Salt Lake or whatever, but I would love to see some businesses uh, here that provide a good living for a family so that they would be able to, to stay in the community. Okay. Um, what steps would you support taking to accommodate future growth in Spanish work? You talked about going from 4,000 to 44,000 and we don't have a lot of space left. So what specific steps would you support to accommodate future growth, specifically transportation and housing? You guys thought a long time about these, didn't you? <laughs> so transportation and housing are always questions that come up. Uh, housing in our community, uh, we need to have a variety of that housing. I have, from the day I started, I have not been a huge fan of high density housing. I, I'm, I'm still not a huge fan of that, but I think it needs to be done in the right way. I would like to see, so, as we look forward to hopefully having some transit down into this area and maybe tracks or a train so that high density is close to that. Um, we are currently doing something. Uh, I like in the charter of Spanish Fork and our, all our, that we remain an agri agricultural city. I don't want Spanish Fork to be the answer to Utah's housing problems. I would like it to remain this nice, community where we have volunteers and everybody loves being here but we also need to provide when I talk about my kids being able to live here uh, right now housing is is a, on top market that makes it tough for them to be able to afford a housing we did do some stuff with some uh, auxiliary housing units that would help that a little bit but I think we're still still gonna need to do have some of that medium and higher density so that they have a place to live because they'll need to come here. Now, as more people come here, and they're going to, they're coming here because of what we are, Spanish Fork. They're coming here, they love our cities, even those that hear from it. And, and that brings the traffic part of it. And when we look at our plan outlying some of the off ramps that we're going to build, 2700 North and Center Street, and some of the streets that we're building, which is Spanish Fork Parkway that rounds all the way and in down into Canyon Creek, these roads may need to be finished sooner because 
they make an alternate route where right now everybody's channeling to one road to get to a highway and a main artillery out of the state. So we need, we need to focus and improve on those so that the traffic um, and our other communities, Salem is a critical, we're to come through Spanish Fork, we would need to work with Salem and Woodland Hills and, and work to get them so that they have an area if they want to come to Spanish Fork, of course they're coming here, um, Macy's, well, they go to Costco first and then Macy's, right, Bill? <laughs> I, I can follow the tracks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Macy's, then Costco, back. Yeah, um, so they come here to shop, and we know they do, and so, but we want to be able to move down the street and not be able to have such a congestion, and that's something that we're going to have to, and will continue to work on. Um, and, and it's just not new stuff. There are stuff in the works right now that'll, that'll continue regardless of whether, whether we serve, but into the future as things are set in place and we'll continue to help improve this. And, and he's gonna know these better because he's on that, that DOT stuff and, and there are things and plans for this area to help improve that and we hope that we see them. So in terms of housing and um, transportation, they really go hand in hand. Uh, we, I think, as a community need to understand what density means and what it doesn't mean. Um, it's, it's easy to run from the term high density until we define what that actually means. There is a place, there's a time and place in every community for something other than single family homes. That's Spanish work today. We need to find, it's the time and the place to figure out where that goes. So what I do specifically, find out where those locations within our city can accommodate something other than single family residences. And when I say accommodate that, that means have good access to a facility that you can drive to. So that we don't put density behind a neighborhood and those folks have to drive through that neighborhood to get to something like Canyon Road or Main Street or US 6. But if you, if you put, come on Pete, help me out. <laughs> so if you put those places, if we plan for them in the right location, you can really minimize that development's impact on the infrastructure. <clears throat> and you can start to encourage other tri types of transportation modes like transit. Today, Spanish Fork is so spread out that it's very difficult to put in a transit system that's effective. But if you take Center Street near I-15, where a future transit stop for Front Runner could be, and you start putting more density there, something less than single family homes, and encouraging a, an organization like UTA to, to extend Front Runner down to that spot, you can start to get people on buses and trains and things like that. But until you have the right land uses, those type of systems just aren't going to work. They're just not cost benefit. So it's, it's a hand in hand thing. I think we need to leverage what the river bottoms is. And when, when I say that, I don't mean put density in the river bottoms. I, we don't, I don't want that developed at all. But we have a resource there that we can tap into. It is a, it is, there's two things going on down there. There's opportunity for development, and there's people with property rights that have the right to do something with their property. And I think those two things can go hand in hand. We take the opportunity to develop down there and we move that opportunity somewhere else in the city. So we increase the density somewhere else and leave that vacant down there. So instead of having homes down there that are hard to get to, the transportation is difficult, we put those places where they have accessibility to both water, sewer, gas, and roads. And we keep it open. So they're going hand in hand. So it's, it's just, it's not one thing. It's a collection of things across the city that allow us to grow sustainably and in, in, a, in a manner that my kids want to be here and that doesn't have a detrimental effect to the citizens here or their pocketbook for that matter. If you have to extend a road all the way out into West Fields because we've developed out there, that's very, very costly or sewer or gas or whatever it might be. So let's take advantage of what we have now with good access to I-15, good access to 6, and really b and plan our community to function that way. Um, how would you fix Main Street in terms of traffic, business access, um, maintaining the Spanish Forks identity, those types of things? That's a great question. Um, out here in, in Canyon Creek has been a, an exceptional asset to the community. Um, 
you know, I grew up here. We never had anything like this. We had Macy's, but that was it. Um, but it's been a, an, a value asset to the city, and it's time now to focus on Main Street. The city council couldn't really focus on Main Street, I don't think, until now. Now that this is established up here, we can really start looking at Main Street and, and bringing back what I grew up with, which was a vibrant downtown Main Street. Um, right now, we have this enormously wide road that it can accommodate a lot of traffic. And depending on who you ask, it's busy on Main Street, right? It's, it's, there's a, there's a lot of traffic, but it accommodates it really, really well. And there's opportunities to take some of that road away and make it more walkable, more friendly, and a place where you'd want to go. We need two lanes each direction to get traffic through there. No question about it. But I am willing to live with a little bit of congestion at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and 8 in the morning to have something different down there to have something that my community can stand behind and want to be part of their community. I'd love to go down there and walk down Main Street, but it's just not that friendly today. But if we took away some of the parking, put it behind the shops, we put some, some you know, paths down the side, it's really a place where you can go and have a good time. You can go to Doc Brundy's, have some dinner, and go to Lance's shop and get some, some insurance or go down to Matt's and get some insurance or go play at the park, whatever it might be, right? You can go out and you can, you can perform all those things that you can anywhere in the city right down there in Spanish Fork. And grow, when I grew up, when I was growing up, that's where you went. You went downtown. You don't do that anymore. <clears throat> but there are ways to make it happen. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And it's time to stop thinking about it and start acting on those things. So the, f the first thing is the parking that comes up uh, and Spanish Fork has, has been working and trying to do some parking things. We've purchased a couple of pieces of property and we are working with some of those businesses. The main thing is those businesses because parking is so precious to them because if we start doing things on Main Street that takes away from that parking, that takes away from their business. But we also need, and we've talked that the traffic right now needs needs to slow down. Um, they've got several ideas to put a bike lane. We want to paint lines so that the parking's uniform on the street uh, instead of just wherever you want. But with that, when you start doing, then you have to work with the Department of Transportation, which then comes turning lanes, which t takes away some of those precious parking spots because a lot of the businesses that we have right now do not have parking per se behind their business right now. Some do, some don't, or are very limited. Um, the other thing is the traffic. Uh, I would like to see an alternate route through our community. And, and some of those plans on the east side of town are there, but 1150 East and 2550 East are arteries out of the community for that entire side of that community. And when you come down to Main Street, you'll hear constantly, I, you know, don't go down there, don't go down there, it's too crowded. We need to make that so that that is something that, yeah, let's go down there and like Shane said, let's, let's go down to one of these places and have dinner or buy, a, buy something that they're selling. Um, and, and we need to work on making that Main Street so it's slowing the traffic down, making it nice to be there. I know a lot of it is the early morning going to work and the evening coming back home. Off ramps would help that. Salem's involved in a new street that comes down out of Elk Ridge would help that because that would take some of that traffic right out to the freeway. Some of those things we need to continue to work on. And as Shane said, we, we need to speed them up because we're growing quick and traffic is huge and the parking is, is an issue. But we have been working with the people down downtown. Um, they did a thing a while back uh, with the chamber so that they encouraged them to finish the fronts of their buildings to make them look nicer and presentable. We don't want to destroy them older buildings, but they did and they handed out some grants and those grants have been used. Um, so Spanish Fork has been working. We've been very, very busy with Kang and Crick, I'll admit, but we have had some things going on downtown and, and we need to keep that. I watched, when I worked for the phone company, I watched so many communities and, and I wasn't, I'm, I'm, 
wasn't a huge fan of Walmart because Walmart would come in and move outside, and I watched those main streets close. And when Spanish Fork, we didn't ask Walmart to come. They came to us. We want to be here. They want to be a part of this thing. And, and uh, I wasn't a huge fan of it because I've seen what would happen. Walmart comes in and our main street goes away. Well, not Spanish Fork Walmart. Our main street's still here. There's still businesses on it. There's still businesses that are viable and doing, doing well. There's some change going on that's going to happen. But we need to continue to, to work with those businesses, help them. And, and I know a lot of times they say, you know, we helped Canyon Creek. Why aren't you helping us? And that's what we're trying to do now, is help them a little bit, help them get grants, help them get loans that they can improve that. And as a city, as we work to get public parking down there, which that helps, so that if you park, then you can walk to these businesses and not be afraid of being downtown or the traffic that's going on. Thank you. Okay, thanks to both of you for being here. We appreciate that. Thank you. And Good luck come November, and I hope your wishes come true. Thank you.